All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Um, my name is Nick Goodfellow. My pronouns are he, him. I'm the sustainability coordinator for Auxiliary Services at the University. Welcome to our afternoon session for students on Healthy Ride at Pitt as part of the Green Greetings series. I'm so glad that you can all join us. If you haven't already, take a moment to introduce yourself over chat to the other attendees so we get a sense of who's joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, some housekeeping notes, you can use the chat um, to have a conversation with the rest of the group if you'd like. Um, if you have questions, uh, you can submit them through the Q&A um, and we will be answering them at the end of the presentation. We think this presentation will take about 20 minutes or so, not too long, um, so that we have an opportunity to answer your questions. So uh, with that, uh, we'll introduce our panelists. Erin, do you want to introduce yourself first? Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Erin, uh, pronouns she, her, and I am the Director of Marketing and Community Outreach at Healthy Ride, our uh, bike share here in Pittsburgh. Great. Hi, I'm Jules Cooper, uh, my, pronoun are, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I um, am currently a Program Associate at the Pitt Student Office of Sustainability, and last year I was an Eco Rep. And I'm a student. <laughs> Thank you both. Okay, so we're going to start uh, by learning a bit about Healthy Ride from Erin. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, so just to give you a little introduction about who our organization is and what Bike Share is, uh, you know, hopefully some of you are familiar with Bike Share either here in Pittsburgh or in one of the over 75 cities throughout North America. Um, you know, I think it's pretty common for people to say, oh, those are the city bikes, um, which is the name of the program in New York City. So there are bike shares all around uh, the US, all around the world. And we are the nonprofit bike share program here in Pittsburgh. We are the only bike share operator at this point in Pittsburgh. Uh, we operate the Healthy Ride system. And uh, our mission is really to expand access to public transit through easy to use and affordable active transportation opportunities. Um, so we do see biking and bike share in particular as a transportation specific resource. And the system is really designed to accomplish those short trips that you might wanna make throughout your day. It might not accomplish every trip that you're going to make throughout your day, but really trying to uh, encourage people to choose uh, active transportation and biking more specifically as a crayon in their crayon box when they're thinking about transportation and how they might want to get from point A to point B. Um, we have been around since 2015 and so far we've had well over 445,000 trips taken uh, on our system so that's really exciting. Uh, and right now we currently have 100 stations throughout the city of Pittsburgh. We operate in the city of Pittsburgh only. Uh, and we have 17 stations throughout uh, the Oakland campus specifically. But you can use any station uh, in the footprint and you can rent and return from any one. You can also, you know, while we talk about transportation, I think we all know that biking can be just a great way to get outside to get a little active um, and you can certainly rent and return from the same station. So there's no rules around that. Um, but yeah, excited to introduce this unlimited 30 minute pass for all students, staff and faculty this year at Pitt and uh, see all of the, the trips that you all might consider making using bike share. Great, thank you, Erin. Um, so uh, the Healthy Ride at Pitt partnership is not completely new. So last year, the Office of Sustainability, who co-sponsors this program now with Parking Transportation and Services, um, piloted a Healthy Ride program for all first year students and RAs. And um, it was a good opportunity for us to understand how students use uh, bike share. Our, our pilot program was cut short a bit by COVID, but um, a combination of the pilot program success, the feedback we got from the riders and really from the people who didn't have access to the benefit, who were quite jealous, 
and COVID uh, are all, I'll give them all credit for our expansion. So um, this year, uh, the announcement that we made uh, today really was that um, all uh, undergraduate and graduate students as well as faculty and staff have unlimited uh, access to unlimited 30 minute rides on healthy ride bikes. So what that means, unlimited 30 minute rides means that you can rent one bike uh, for free uh, for up to 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes uh, or before 30 minutes, you need to return the bike. Um, if your ride lasts longer than 30 minutes, you'll be charged um, from the method, the payment method on your account at the standard pay-as-you-go rate of $2 for 30 minutes. Um, so if you do want to take a ride that lasts longer than 30 minutes, if you're planning to go downtown or downtown and, and bike around a bit, um, you will be charged. Uh, but there's a way to get around that, and that is uh, return your bike to any station before the 30 minutes to avoid the charge, and then just rent it again. So this is um, a great way for you to get to most places within the Healthy Ride Network. Oakland is quite centrally located um, and has a lot of really great bike infrastructure, uh, bike lanes and, and uh, trails nearby. So you can get to a lot of places within 30 minutes. But if you do need to ride somewhere that is uh, further away, um, that's one thing to keep in mind uh, when biking. Um, okay. Erin, you want to talk about how to activate the benefit? Oops. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in the coming week, you will receive an email from Pitt with your individual uh, unique voucher code. And that voucher code uh, is going to be what enables your account to give you those free 30 minute rides. So once you have that code, um, there will be instructions in the email that tell you to go over to our website. Um, we do highly encourage you to use a desktop computer. Um, it just makes the application a little bit easier. So go over to healthyridepgh.com, actually. But if you go to .org, no problem. <laughs> I think it will just uh, send you over to .com. Um, and you will walk through our registration process. Just make sure you're uh, registering with your PIT email domain. So you're at pit.edu email address. Um, activate your full account. And then once you have your account, you log in and you just apply that voucher code in the voucher tab. And uh, once you've applied that code, you are all ready to start riding. And again, like Nick said, it's unlimited 30 minute rides um, all the way through spring semester. So uh, you can take as many 30 minute trips as you want once you have that code applied to your Healthy Ride account. So you want to make sure that you create the account, your account on the website and not the app because it'll just toggle back and forth between the app and the website anyways. Um, so once you're done making your account on the .com website, um, you wanna download the Nextbike app from the App Store um, and you want to um, log into the account that you had made on the website. Um, then uh, you're gonna look and there's like maps with uh, like, different pinpoints of like where bikes are located in Pittsburgh. There's a ton of like stations all around Pitt's campus. So there'll be one that's really close to you pretty much regardless of what residence hall you're living in. There'll be one within like a mile at the most. Um, and then you're gonna scan when you go, you're gonna go to the bike and when you get to the bike, you'll scan the bike QR code um, with the app and then enter the bike number um, to rent the bike. Um, and the bike will like, give you a little like number back to type into the bike um, and then it'll unlock. Um, and you'll remove the bike lock from um, the dock and put it in the holster and um, adjust the heat, the seat height, um, make sure the tires are uh, firm enough to ride, they're not flat um, and check like squeeze on the brakes to make sure that they're still working. Um, yeah. Um, and when it comes to returning a bike, uh, you can return a bike to any station, not just the one that you rented the bike from, as long as it's like a healthy ride bike station. And so say you want to uh, bike from like right 
by like Soldiers and Sailors Memorial to like the south side or something. You can bike there, park your bike or um, return your bike there and then come back and get it later or rent another bike later to bike back. Um, when you return your bike, you wanna make sure you lock the bike. So you put that little thing you pulled out right back into it. Um, and when, and you can um, press uh, the OK button to uh, make sure the display reads return. So it is like totally sure that you return the bike so you don't get charged for like overtime or something. Okay, we're gonna play a video so that you can put some visuals to those instructions. Oh, also you wanna make sure that you have a helmet. So you wanna either bring one from home or go to bikepittsburgh.com to find um, resources on where to get a helmet. I don't know, can anybody hear it? There's nice music. I don't know if it's playing. Yeah, it's also really important if you saw how like the, like this person took out the lock and put it back in right in front of the basket um, to make sure it's secure, not dangling around um, because that can be a little bit of a safety problem if you are just letting the big like metal, thing jangle around your bike yeah right there just want to make sure you plug it right back into that sorry there's no music everyone you just play your favorite song in the background Yeah, it's important to check the gears because sometimes you'll get on the bikes and the person before will have the gears like adjusted like super high or super low or something. And then you're like, oh my God, like what is wrong with this bike? And then it's really just, it's just the gears are shifted in a wonky way for the like incline that you're going to go to. Okay, this is the part, pay attention right in there. This is the hardest part I think for everybody who's riding first is figuring out how to lock it. Yay. Okay, we've got one more video to really get the point across about locking um, and returning the bike versus parking, because you can lock the bike without ending your trip if you are not at a station. So we've got this video to share. So some uh, tips when riding, um, Jules mentioned it before, but I'll say it again, wear a helmet. Um, although it's not a law in Pennsylvania, we strongly encourage everyone to wear a helmet, especially if you're a new rider. So if you're thinking about what you're gonna be packing uh, to bring to campus, if you're preparing your ship to pit box or, or whatever you're bringing um, in your car or on a plane or however you're getting to campus, I encourage you to bring a helmet uh, so that you can ride safely once you are here. Um, we're going to go into route planning in a, in, in a few slides, but route planning is really important as well for your first few rides, uh, especially if you're a new rider. The last thing you want to do is turn down a street that you're unfamiliar with or that doesn't have a bike lane or you get lost and then you're stuck on a bike lost in a new city. It's not fun. So we'll give you some tips on how to uh, avoid that and plan your routes. Um, 
You shouldn't walk on, uh, drive on, or ride bikes on sidewalks. Um, that is also uh, against the law in business districts, and it can put uh, pedestrians uh, in your path. Um, if you do feel like you need to get onto the sidewalk, you should pull your bike over and walk it on the sidewalk um, until you feel more comfortable getting back on your bike. Um, like any vehicle that's on the road, you should stop at red lights and stop signs and yield to pedestrians. Uh, when you are on the road, you're treated essentially as um, a slow moving car. Um, so you have to follow the same rules as cars do. Um, and don't wear your headphones while riding. If you are, if you need to take a call while riding, you can have maybe one headphone in or pull over, take your call, uh, send your text, uh, and then get back on the bike um, using a, you know, Using, a, using a, a phone while biking is probably as dangerous as doing it while driving. So please be safe while doing that. Um, and that applies to using apps like Google Maps or, or City Mapper to get around. Uh, pull over, take a look at your phone, and then resume riding. Erin, you wanna talk about safety during COVID? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Healthy Ride has remained open for public use throughout the duration of every level of, uh, you know, COVID-19 response that we've had here in Pittsburgh. Uh, and a big part of that is that, you know, it's an outdoor activity that people can still use. And it's also still a single occupancy vehicle. Um, and so people have taking bikes versus other modes of transportation that might put them a little bit closer to, to other people. But, uh, you know, we really want to put safety to the forefront, not just in terms of how you ride, um, but safety during this time as well. So um, our team at Healthy Ride uh, sanitizes bikes every day every bike that goes out of our office back into the field is sanitized and then you will see a healthy ride transit van and potentially even a bicycle uh, that's a large trike that we use for rebalancing the system every time we stop at a station we're sanitizing every bike and uh, every kiosk that we have but uh, that doesn't ensure that you know each bike is going to be freshly sanitized uh, when you're accessing it so we're really uh, kind of impressing on our riders to also do their due diligence, um, making sure you're washing or sanitizing your hands before and after you ride, avoiding touching your face while you're riding. Um, you know, those handlebars really are that common touch point. So just making sure that uh, you're practicing good hand sanitizing uh, and avoiding touching your face. Um, we do have some riders that just prefer to wear gloves while they're riding, you know, providing that additional barrier that they can then remove when they're done riding. Um, making sure that you're giving six feet to those around you. Um, you know, there certainly aren't always the opportunity for six feet between people while they're renting bikes at a station in particular. So uh, just practicing good etiquette and making sure that someone is done at the station maybe before you're, you're using it if you're not going to have that six feet of protection. Um, but also riding on the roads and especially the trails. The trails have been very busy um, you know, throughout this entire summer. People getting out to uh, enjoy the outdoors and you know, get outside their houses. So just making sure you're being respectful of other riders, of pedestrians, and making sure you're giving that, that space. And we're really encouraging people to wear masks. Um, and sometimes, you know, it, if you're having a, if you're going up a real big hill and it's like a difficult breathing exercise, you know, maybe taking it off if you're, you know, unable to complete your, your ride while wearing it, but uh, making sure you're again doing so when you are farther away from other people and keeping it on whenever uh, physically possible is just a really safe uh, practice that we're encouraging people to do. So we're doing our part and uh, we're just asking our riders to also follow up and uh, following some of these uh, recommendations as well. Thank you, Erin. If you have any questions uh, about Healthy Rider or about um, sanitization, uh, you can ask them in the Q&A, and we'll get to those in just a moment. So um, there are quite a lot of ways to get around Pittsburgh, or quite a lot of lanes and, and routes to, to use to get around Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh is a, 
uh, pretty, has a pretty robust biking infrastructure, especially in Oakland, uh, where we're privileged to have um, a lot of investments that have been made into our roads to make them safe for cyclists and pedestrians. Um, so this is a clipping from the Pittsburgh bike map, and I encourage you all to uh, look it up on Google. Uh, Pittsburgh bike map is put together by our um, bike partners at Bike Pittsburgh. Uh, it's a map that they update every year or two um, that shows all of the lanes, uh, all of the protected lanes, all of the roads that have sharrows, which are um, arrows that designate the road as a shared space for cars and bikes. And it also has cautionary roads on it. And I would really recommend you take a look at that before uh, taking your first ride, especially because we, while we do have a lot of great safe bike lanes in Oakland, we also have some very busy roads such as Forbes and Fifth um, that I, I myself as a cyclist of five years don't really like to get on. Um, and so I encourage you to take a look at this map figure out where you can go on the bikes, what lanes um, to use, and also which uh, routes you should avoid, which roads you should avoid especially. So there are, you can use a few apps to help you plan your route. Um, Google Maps, City Mapper, and Transit are all uh, great apps that in different ways can help you uh, figure out where you're going and how to get there. Um, so um, I would, suggest downloading Transit. Um, Transit is an app that we recommend for a number of different modes on campus, um, including buses. So they've been able to integrate uh, healthy ride stations um, and station capacity or, or the number of bikes at the, available bikes at the station so they can show you um, if there is in fact a bike nearby. So the screenshot on the left of the Transit app shows that there I think is probably only one bike available at this station um, at uh, Shenley Plaza. Um, and it shows you the route you should take through Shadyside um, to get to a station in, uh, in Shadyside um, to drop your bike off at. Uh, Google Maps is another great app that you can use. It, it, I especially like it because it shows elevation. In, in Pittsburgh, there are quite a lot of hills. Um, and you, at one point or another, going to bike up them, but you can avoid some of them or go around. <laughs> and so I would really suggest you take a look at that if you think, oh, I'm going to take a nice ride up to the hill. Well, you're going to hit a couple hills. Um, and so you might be able to find a route that helps you get around some of those hills or just gives you reality of it. You're going to be going up a hill. Um, but with both apps, I would really suggest uh, double checking the Pittsburgh bike map. So um, on Google Maps here, the suggested route, this 13 minute route here, actually goes down Bates Street, which is in the Pittsburgh bike map um, a cautionary route. It's a pretty busy uh, road for vehicles, um, and I would avoid it in favor of uh, Panther Run and uh, Panther Hollow, which is this trail um, that's completely separated from cars that goes through the park. So the apps are helpful, but definitely get familiar with the Pittsburgh bike map, how to use that and um, how to uh, sort of use both as a resource. Um, the last thing I would say is know where your destination station is. So say you want to go to Shadyside and you wanna go straight in the heart of Shadyside. Well, there might not, there is actually a station there, but um, there might not be a station at the restaurant or the park that you are going to, or you might, not know where it is. And so know where your destination station is so that you can return your bike to the station and avoid getting to your destination, realizing you have two minutes left in your 30 minutes and then getting charged for essentially finding a parking place. So know where your destination station is. And I'll mention that um, we talked about parking. You can park your bike at a station that is full. Um, so you can park your bike next to the station, very close to the station, try and get away, make sure you're not blocking any right of ways, um, you know, walking paths anywhere that a wheelchair would go um, and lock the bike and return it as you normally would, um, just not connected to the station. I'd also suggest you uh, visit the Healthy Ride website. Um, go to the uh, map button at the top and find the Explore Pittsburgh page. Um, Healthy Rides put together a number of really great recommended rides. Um, so if you want to get to know the north side a bit better, Riverfront or the Downtown Arts District, they have some really great uh, rides um, highlighted in here that they can show you uh, different uh, landmarks along your route. Uh, so you can get to know the city. 
uh, a bit different. Um, and then we also have some custom pit uh, rides that are coming to the Healthy Ride at Pit website um, in the next uh, week or so that help you get around Oakland as well as get to some neighborhoods and destinations uh, from Oakland. Lastly, I really advise you to uh, also check out Bike Pittsburgh's uh, uh, educational videos on how to ride a bike. They have plenty of great videos on how to use a rental, how to cycle uphill. You're going to have to do that quite a bit. Uh, what to do in a group ride, how to cross railroad tracks. Okay, this one I wish I had seen. My first accident on a bike was because I did not take the railroad track the right way. I fell, busted up my arm, then called an Uber. It was all bloody and Uber said, are you sure you don't want to go to the hospital? I said, no, I'm fine. Anyway, Learn from my mistake uh, and make sure you don't make your own by uh, watching some of these videos um, so that you can stay safe while biking, especially if you're new to biking um, on city streets. Um, they have a lot of great videos for uh, two-stage uh, box turns, um, using hand signals. Those are, those are pretty uh, important to watch. Okay, so, um, we have a few questions. Let me pull up the questions here. Okay. When parking, are you still on the clock? When parking? Yes. So parking versus returning. Um, if you park your bike temporarily along your route, um, that makes it unavailable for someone else to use and it leaves it on your account. So it is still on your time until you officially return it at a station. Thank you. Okay, next question. Are there baskets on the bikes or can you attach a clip-on bike basket? There are baskets on every bike um, and they have some flexible bungee cords both on the sides and the top of the basket. And I smile because I have looped in a lot of crazy things into these baskets and those uh those bungees can come off and really come in handy in terms of like securing some awkwardly shaped cargo yeah i want to add to that um i used a healthy ride bike pretty recently um with my friend and he had like a small water bottle that he was trying to put into the but to the um, basket and the basket, the it's not like tightly woven or anything like with metal. And so if you're gonna have like small items, I'd recommend you putting them in a backpack or something and then putting the backpack in the basket or in some kind of bag and then putting that in the basket just to make sure that those smaller items don't fall out when you're riding. If you like hit a bump or something. Okay, our, okay. Another question, is there a plan to redistribute the bikes around Oakland and the surrounding neighborhoods? I've been riding the bikes the past couple weeks and most stations only two to four bikes at any given point. And with more people around trying to use them, I feel like having a few more bikes at stations initially would help people wanting to use. Erin, you wanna answer that one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I referred to the transit van and the tricycle that we use to redistribute bikes. Um, Oftentimes it will be two to four bikes at the station. We'd love to get that number up and we are working on that. Uh, but a lot of it will depend on how people use them. Um, so oftentimes there are areas of our city that we rarely have to rebalance uh, because they just kind of naturally balance themselves um, throughout the day. But we will be paying very close attention uh, to those stations and uh, you know, if we're noticing that one station clearly seems to empty out by you know, 10 a.m. every single day and we don't see bikes going back there for hours, um, we will absolutely prioritize stations like that. And uh, so we, we learn, we use a lot of data um, and it's all uh, private information. Uh, but uh, yeah, we kind of learn from our users and are able to anticipate needs. Uh, so we'll be paying attention for sure. Great, thank you, Erin. Okay, another question. How do we get a pass key from PIT? So I assume this is um, in reference to activating your account. Um, so what we're calling the voucher codes, uh, each student will get an individualized voucher code 
Um, and those will come on Monday or Tuesday next week in your email inbox. So we're currently working out the system to send those to everybody on Monday or Tuesday. Um, and then you'll go to the Healthy Ride uh, website to create your account. You'll need to use your PIT email address um, and you'll uh, enter the voucher code once you've completed your account creation in a, a tab in account settings. So we've, uh, we're going to have a video on our Healthy Ride at Pit website, which is separate from the Healthy Ride website, uh, to show you how to actually do that. But the codes won't be sent to anybody uh, until Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Are the Another question. Uh, thank you for these questions, by the way. Are the bike handles cleaned or should we wear gloves to bring wipes? Yeah, so we do sanitize bikes every single day. Um, we sanitize bikes in stations throughout the day, but we do encourage people to uh, wash their hands before and after they ride. Um, you know, recommend carrying a little bottle of hand sanitizer. And some people really do prefer the glove route. They like to provide that physical barrier between you and the, the handlebars. And, um, you know, there's no issue with doing that. So uh, whatever you're most comfortable with, uh, absolutely wearing gloves can be a helpful way to uh, prevent the spread of disease. Thank you, Erin. Okay, I'm gonna launch a poll here. How likely are you to use Healthy Ride this semester? Very likely, likely, meh, not sure, probably not. What's Healthy Ride? What am I doing here? Okay, in the meantime, let's uh, uh, answer another question. Can you return a bike to a station if it's full? Yes. Uh, so unlike some programs in some other cities, uh, we have that cable lock on each of our bicycles um, that is inserted through the front wheel of the bike and kind of disables it, not kind of, it does disable the bike from moving. Um, and therefore, if you lock the bike uh, near the station, if the station is full, you can successfully return it just as you would if it were at an actual uh, rack at the station. Um, but like Nick mentioned, you know, we really ask our customers, you know, in that case to try to make sure it is lined up with the station, close to the station, and not uh, in the way of any pedestrian access. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, results of the poll. Yay, 50%. Uh, eight out of what, 16 people said they are going to very likely to use Healthy Ride. That's great. Um, for those of you who are not, if you want to let me know why, let us know why. I'm curious to know. Any other questions? Okay. Where can we find the map that you showed for the best biking routes? So uh, you can um, Google Pittsburgh bike map. I'm 99% sure that that will lead you to the Pittsburgh bike map. Um, but I will say Googling is your best bet. Uh, through Bike Pittsburgh, um, that has the a very in-depth map, both a printable one as well as a web-based one of uh, bike lanes and, and, and healthy ride stations in the city. I, I'd recommend looking at the print version because it uh, pretty clearly shows where all the maps are. Um, we're also working to get um, a couple, um, a couple print copies of the updated map. They're working on a, a new version of the Pittsburgh bike map when that comes out that you can uh, get around, um, that you can get around campus. Um, you can also uh, uh, look at Healthy Rides website, healthyridepgh.com. Click on map and explore Pittsburgh, and that's where the recommended routes are um, that uh, Healthy Ride have have put together that shows. Um, different guided rides, if you will, through uh, through the city. Cool, Jacob. I'm glad you'll be using the bike. Okay, um, we'll stick around for 30 more seconds if there are any other questions. 
Um, otherwise, thank you all very much for joining the Green Greetings. Um, I'll give a shout out to the Green Greetings um, tomorrow with, with uh, Aaron, uh, who's an eco rep, and Anne Fernie, who is a, a SUS program associate. And Jules, are you on that one too? I am on that one too. So if you want to um, sign up for that, uh, you definitely still can. Um, if you find us on Instagram at pitsus, P-I-T-T-S-O-O-S, I'll like put it in the chat or on our Facebook page, the Student Office of Sustainability, um, you can find links to the sign up for that of those events as well. Um, oh, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's the sign up for that. Um, and yeah, I really hope you guys come to that too, because we're gonna be talking about recycling and reusables on campus and um, what's the, really like the right way to recycle because it's not really as straightforward as many people think. So if you wanna know why, come to the Green Greetings tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Awesome, I'll be there. All right, and I hope to see you too. <laughs> and on that, Thank you, everybody. Uh, oh, one more question. Okay. Uh, would you guys recommend bringing your own bike or using Healthy Ride? Ooh, that's a good question. So um, you can bring your own bike. There are a number of locations that you can uh, store your bike uh, in, in weather protected park, bike parking. So Nordenberg Hall, um, any of the towers or quad residence halls and any of the bouquet halls have access to mm -hmm. indoor bike, bike rooms. And, and Sutherland yeah, also bike. has, and Sutherland also has the bike boxes, which are like boxes you can store your bikes in that are like weather protected. I think it really comes down to how much you think you're gonna be using your bike. Um, if you think you're gonna be using your bike all the time, I would maybe bring your own, but if you're not gonna be using your bike all the time, it's more like infrequently or like, I want to try this restaurant like a couple times a month or something, even like once a week, I'd recommend Healthy Ride. Um, I brought a bike to campus my freshman year when I lived in Sutherland, which um, if you've been to Pitt's campus, you know, is all the way up a ginormous hill. Um, <laughs> and so I ended up not using it um, just because that hill was so awful that I was Don't like, say that. There are people that are going to be living there this year, Jules. It's not that big of a hill. <laughs> It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's just, it's a little bit steep. Um, and so, but if you do healthy rides then there's a bike parking spot, there's like a healthy ride bike station at the bottom of the hill, right on your walk up. And so it's, if you're living like in Sutherland, it's really convenient to be able to park your bike there and not have to either like to bring your bike up the big hill, I guess, the, the hill. The Sorry. It, it's hill. not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid. It's okay. You, you'll get in really great shape from it, too. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next question. Do you guys bike to your classes or are most of them in walking distance? Like, um, I walk to most of my classes. Last year, I lived in Forbes Craig apartment, which is um, like, it's like just kind of right by the Carnegie Museum of Art, if you know where that is. Um, and when I was going to like um Benidorm which is the engineering hall it's kind of across campus from Benidorm and so sometimes I'd bike there but campus is really walkable um I'd say like the longest walk you're gonna have is maybe like 15 or 20 minutes depending on your where you're living if you're living on um one of the pit associated residences which are the hotels um most of them are pretty close to but there's one I think that might be a little bit further away that it might be good if you have a bike for that. Um, but I would say like, like maybe try mapping your uh, residence hall to like all the buildings that your classes are at and trying to see like the distance. I know like from Sutherland to Kathy, it's like 0.7 miles um, exactly, I think. Um, <laughs> which is like for me, it's a downhill walk. It took me like 15 minutes at the most. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say you need a bike to get around like to your classes but i mean you can definitely use one and a lot of people do bike too so yeah and i'll say if you're living in the residence in bigelow which is the sort of furthest hotel we are adding a few more bike racks there so that 
you can bike down Bigelow. And that portion of Bigelow is actually relatively bike friendly, um, unlike another portion of it, which is like a highway. Um, but you, it's also pretty walkable. Okay. Um, if you do have questions, you can um, ask the pit eco reps or uh, Seuss on social media. Uh, they have a wealth of knowledge and connect and can connect you with anybody um, that uh, you need to talk to to uh, get an answer if they don't have it. Um, and with that, thank you all so much and uh, see you tomorrow at Recycling and Reuse. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Thanks Jules. See you guys. See you tomorrow.